Hi, I'm Colin from hdcctv.co.uk. Many people only want one camera with their CCTV system. They don't want to buy an NVR or DVR. They just want to record single camera, see what's going on, and remotely access it. You can do that now with these uh, IP cameras we sell. This is the X2C 5000V-W. It's a 5 megapixel IP dome camera. There's a slot inside for a 128 gigabyte memory card. We will be selling it with a card, cable, power supply, everything as a complete kit. So check the site for that. Uh, this video will go into depth of how to use it with a web browser on a Windows PC. The browser is Internet Explorer. Uh, and I'll do a separate video very shortly with how to use it with the desktop software XIQ CMS. Okay, let's have a look at the X5C 5000V-W. Here it is on the website, and here it is in the flesh. So this is the camera. It's a small dome camera, IP. Uh, that's how it fits together. You've got a little ring there that screws through there. Let's take it apart. So you mount that, that bracket on the wall, and then the rest assembles like that. Okay, so now this camera This camera can take an SD card inside it, but to do that, to get it inside, you have to remove these three screws. It's a Phillips screwdriver, so remove the three screws. Okay, now be careful when you open this, this up because there is a ribbon cable between the two parts. So there's the ribbon cables there, so it opens that way. Now you've also got in here, just to be, might drop out, this is a, a silica bag to keep any condensation away from inside the camera. And then here is the SD card slot. There's already a card in there. It's quite fiddly to get in, but you can get it in in place. I won't pull it out because I want to use it in a second for a demonstration, but there it is. It'll take up to 128 gigabit card, um, gigabyte card, sorry. Make sure it's a class 10 card so it can uh, write the data fast enough. Once you've got the card in there, you can put the camera back together and line up the holes for the, uh, the screws and put it back together. Okay, so when you get the camera, there's a little mini CD that comes with it. Um, if you run the CD, put it into a PC computer, and then navigate to the, the drive. Open the drive and you'll see you've got folders, mobile software, software for Mac, software for PC, and some PDF document manuals. So we go to software for PC. We've got video player, surveillance client, and device search. So device search is the one we want. We Install that program there. I won't install it because it's already installed here on this computer. So you run that program there. Once it's installed, open it up. It will then do a search of the network and find any cameras. The camera, when you first plug it in, will be set to 192168, either 1 or 0168. So that's the camera we're looking at. And we need to get now set that to the same IP address to suit our network. So let's just uh, click on this bar, not on the actual link itself, but somewhere along this bar, that then allows us to ed ed edit this information. So I know what IP address I've got spare on my network, so I'm gonna go 10.0.0.157. The gateway is the address of your router. That normally begins with the same, same three numbers, and then it's either a one or a 254 at the end. Media port 9988, net mask should be 255, 255, 250. 
web port 80 and you can leave it set to static. Username is admin and password is admin. So click modify. That will then change the IP address of the camera. So when we do a search, here we are 10.0.0.157. So we can go straight to it from here by just clicking on the link. And that'll open up a web browser and tell you about a plugin. So to install the plugin, you down, click on the download link and then go to save. Once it's downloaded, click run. It'll then ask if it's okay to run a program, click yes. Okay, so now before you go any further, install the new program, close down this browser, otherwise it won't install properly. So install that, we can close down this now. Okay, so we'll open Internet Explorer as admin. So I'm gonna right click, open it as administrator. And then we'll go to the IP address that we set. So that's 10.0.0.157. Now we've got the uh, login screen, so enter the password. Default is admin. And then you're into the viewing screen from the, uh, from the camera. Let's just bring that full screen. Okay, so at the top, we've got some controls here. I'll run through those in a second. We've got three buttons, mainstream, substream, and mobile stream. Now these affect the, the resolution you're viewing. Um, so if we just look at the mainstream, we've got the best quality, uh, clearest picture. Down the bottom right corner, you can see the, uh, the amount of data being used as the picture is being sent. Substream is slightly softer, lower resolution, less data. You can see the data rate has dropped considerably. And then you've got mobile stream, which is the uh, very lowest quality lowest data used and this is best for when you're viewing on a smartphone. Let's just go back to mainstream. Along the top right corner here we've got some various colour controls, hue, brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness. So you can tweak your settings here, a bit more colour, a bit less colour, that sort of thing. Now along the bottom we have a few, oh mess that up haven't I, let's just default that back to as it should be. So down the bottom of the screen, we've got some buttons. This one, first one will stop the picture. It'll turn the picture off, so stop the, the feed from the camera. Next one is a stretch button. So this is the native resolution of the camera, which is a 4.3 resolution. And this, uh, this just stretches it out to fill the screen. I actually prefer that, that view. This one will take the, all the display away and just leave the, the camera view. And you come out of that by hitting the escape button on the keyboard. Now your next set are for uh, making recordings or snapshots of what you're viewing on the screen. So before we go into that, let me just go into the settings and show you uh, a couple of things. So we'll go to local settings. Now this is, this is where on the computer the, uh, the recording or the snapshot is going to be saved and what file formats they're going to be in. So you can set your, your path here. I'm just going to go to the data drive. because that's an empty-ish empty, uh, empty -ish data drive. Uh, now the file type, when you first use the camera, it's set to RF. Now RF is a proprietary file used by the camera to work with the playback software. If you're gonna use this to take video files off the, comp off the uh, camera, off the card and save them for evidence or video editing, then I suggest you use one of the other two options, which are AVI and MP4. Now, I'm an Apple Mac user, so MP4 is the one for me. Uh, if you're into Windows, then AVI is probably the best one. But I'm going to choose MP4, and for the capture type, the pictures, JPEG is fine. So I'll save that, and go back to live. Now, when we go into the uh, back to these buttons here, this one will start recording and record 
anything it sees to the computer, to the drive D we've just set up. So I'll hit record. The icon changes to blue while it's recording. When I press the same icon again, that will stop recording and show where the recording is on the, on the hard drive. So I'll click there and there's the, uh, the path come up. I click on the folder. There's the day, today's date and there's the recording we just made. So very simple to get it and then you can of course save that to somewhere else, export it, burn to DVD, whatever you want to do with it. Save applies to the snapshot button. Obviously it's just going to take a still snapshot and then show you the picture. Same with the snapshot button, you hit that to take a snapshot and then you can go into the folder and see the snapshots you've taken. Sorry, that's not the snapshot. Well, that's a snapshot. There we go. Okay. Next one is digital zoom. So with this one, you notice the arrow on the screen. When you hit that, it changes to a plus. And that allows you to draw a box around an item. Let's draw around that grey car. So click and drag a box, let go, and then you'll have the, the zoomed in version. If you want to go in a bit further, that's okay. You can do that. And use the right mouse button to come out of the zoom. Finally, on the bottom here, we have the audio um, mute and audio volume from the microphone. So you can listen to the, the camera live and playback. Okay, now, now if we go to the top of the screen, we've got live playback, remote setting and local settings. Local settings we've just seen, that was the recording stuff to the computer itself. Remote settings is all the settings the camera has. And we'll go into that in a little more detail in a second. Uh, let me just show you playback screen first of all. So this is the playback screen. On top left, you've got a calendar, the date and the year. You can see a little red line under the 9 and 10 there. That's yesterday and today's date of recordings on the, on the card. We can choose what sort of recordings we want. We can go for all of them, intelligence, whatever, and it'll show us those. And then we just do hit search. And then what should happen along the bottom of the screen, we should have an indication on the timeline here. So between about 11 o'clock this morning and... Uh, about now, which is quarter to two, we have a constant recording there. So we can hit play. It's just uh, that was I was messing around with the colours then when I first plugged it in. So there's uh, there's some bits throughout the day. So I'm just clicking on the timeline, moving across. Now this timeline showing me midnight to midnight. So I might want to go into a bit more detail. So I'm going to hit the plus button, and you can see that expands the view so I've got a little bit more fine detail I can go to 11 26 and 30 seconds quite easily like that and you can of course bring it back out again 24 hours you've got pause play stop forward by one frame so you can step forward a frame at a time you can also record what you're doing as, uh, as another file by doing this or take a snapshot from your playback from this you can download a file on mass, so uh, see the si size of some of these files. Click on the box, hit start downloading it, or download it to the uh, download path you set earlier. Here is your playback speed setting. You can go from one eighth of normal speed to eight times normal speed. And again, you've got your audio digital zoom. You can zoom in via playback as well. Let's try that again. There we go, and uh, hit play. And then of course we've got the full screen playback. Okay, so that's playback screen. Now let's go into the settings that the camera has. Now it's got various record modes, I'll go into that in a second, but let's just run through the menu. So we've got display, this shows the um, camera live, the title of the camera, whether you want to show the name and the time. Here is the settings for the camera itself. You can change the exposure, the shutter speed, the night vision, wide dynamic range, 
all that sort of thing. So you can leave that set to default unless you've got any problems and then you give us a call and we'll talk you through how to improve that. Um, privacy zone, you sometimes see this sort of thing in use when you're seeing a TV programme with prisoners and they normally put a black zone around the toilet so you can't obviously protect their privacy. This will do that, so you've got a, maybe perhaps a neighbour that doesn't want to be recorded or an area you don't want to be recorded, that will black that out. And you can, uh, you can do that. Let's just uh, disable that. So that's ROI is region of interest. Now here, you can draw a box around, or any, any shape at all, around an object or a thing or a path or anything at all. What it will do, it will record 25 frames a second or the fastest rate you can record in the area that's red and the non-ROI area the frames per second will be slower so anyone coming down here will be quite jerky only at five frames a second and, and therefore using less hard drive space and then as soon as the, the object enters this area it's at full frame rate and you can get the highest quality and the highest motion there. Okay, next menu is record. This is where you can set the parameters of the recording. You can record the mainstream or the substream. Um, again, if you want to save hard drive space, record the substream. Scheduler, this allows you to set a week's worth of uh, settings. As you can see, along the top, we've got midnight to midnight, and down the left, the seven days of the week. Default setting is normal, so this is constant recording all the time. You can leave it like that and you can add in motion detection or sound detection. You can take away constant recording so you've only got motion detection or only sound detection or a mix of two motion and sound detection or all three if you want. Uh, to enable it, you simply click on the right box. The middle box is yellow, which is uh, determining motion. So if you want motion, you would click and drag across these lines here for the days you want motion. It's a little bit clunky doing it this way. You used to be able to drag and drag a box but now you can't do that anymore so it's uh, this method but as you can see is a little bit messy if you're a bit trying to do it fast but I'm just clicking on each block and sliding across just to try and fill them in there we go just do these two days now to rather than keep you waiting so there we go so on these two days Sunday and Monday it's recording constantly and motion if you wanted to save hard drive space disable the constant recording just leave the motion and it will only record when there's someone moving in the picture. Likewise with the sound detection, if you use the bottom line, oh, so on Sunday would now be sound and motion only. You can do, obviously disable motion as well, so it's only sound. Now sound detection is a new feature we've uh, just discovered in the new models. Very, very good it is indeed. You can um, let me see if I can find the setting for it. Uh, intelligent detection. Here we go. No, that's not it. Some the alarm. There we go. Sound detection. So you can enable it, disable it here. You've got rise and decline. Now, so let's let's give you a scenario. You, you've got a camera on your front door. And any time someone makes a noise near that camera, it would start recording if rise is turned on. So it's going from quiet, the noise is rising, a car going past, a dog barking, a doorbell, someone pulling onto your drive, anything, any, someone trying to break a window, anything like that will trigger the rising sound and start the recording. Decline you would use for something like um, maybe you had a camera on a machine or in a farm where, where there's going to be some noise going all the time. The, the powers lose the power, uh, or you know, the machine breaks, for example, the noise reduces to what its normal level is, and you get a notification. So there's multiple uses there. You can use it to keep an eye on the dog. So if the dog's barking a lot, your neighbors are complaining, you can uh, use it for that to prove it is or isn't barking. You can see it, it, why it was barking, because all the cameras are recording the postman, for example, or a delivery driver. You can use it for a baby monitor. You get a notification if baby's crying upstairs, that, that sort of thing. So it's very, very versatile. So sound, sound detection mode. Okay, so let's just go back to the, um, the scheduler. So that's, that's what that would do. When you make a change of setting, make sure you save it, otherwise it won't save it as, as has happened here. Okay, next one, network. This is all the geeky networky stuff. 
you don't need to worry about this. You're online already because you've logged into the camera. That's all fine. You can adjust settings if you know what you're doing here. You need to do anything. This is where you do it. Video streaming. This is the resolution coming out the main sub and mobile stream that we saw on the live um, live screen a second ago. So these uh, these three buttons here. Mainstream, so you can set the resolution, the highest resolution, the frame rate, the codec, the bit rate, where the audio is recorded, that sort of thing. Substream, you'll see I've got set to 1080p. We could change that to something else. And mobile stream is even lower, 640 by 480. So they, each one using less and less data, making the connection quicker if you've got slow broadband or you just need a quick look at the cameras. Email, the camera will send emails out when it gets notification, uh, alarm notifications, sound notifications. Um, intelligent features, motion, anything like that, it will send, can send an email out to any address you wish, up to three people, three receivers. Here is where you'd enter your um, server details, so you'd maybe use SSL in your email settings. Your server might be smtp.virgin.net, for example. You can Google your um, email settings or contact your broadband provider to get this information. Your email username and password the email address that you're sending from and the three people receiving it and how often they receive it. When you're setting this up, make sure you do a test email to make sure it's set up correctly. If it comes back okay, then, then all good. Other, other network settings we have is DDNS. We've got an IP filter to allow, um, allow or block any, any troublesome connections. RTSP, real-time streaming protocol for you people you want to use this camera for websites or uh, just a live stream into another system or using it with another NVR or a NAS drive, that sort of thing. FTP, again, same sort of thing. You know what you're doing with this sort of thing. Pop your details in there, save it, done. SM, SNMP is a new one. Uh, this is for internet devices connecting to each other. We've not needed to use this yet, but I'm sure it will become useful in the, in the future. HTTPS, uh, secure web, web server system. You can enable that and you can choose unique or public certificate. Into the alarms mode now, we've got motion. So this is the motion screen. We can enable and disable it. On the right, you have a preview of the um, system. Now where the blocks are red, it means it's looking for motion and where they're clear, you can get clear by clicking on a box and dragging a shape out. So this, uh, as you can see there, I've just dragged out that clear box. So anywhere here will be ignored and the top section would be looking for motion. You'd use this mainly where there was uh, trees blowing in the wind and, and that might activate, you know, give you false activations. So in this case, I'd probably use something like this. Like that. Okay, uh, sensitivity adjustable here. How long it records after motion has finished. Uh, whether it sends an email and uh, enables record. Centre Cloud is something we're still looking at. I'm not sure that's set up correctly or yet or on this, this version of firmware, so we'll add that to the video at a later date. Video tampering, this is if someone um, plays with a camera, puts their hand over it, that sort of thing, it will send an email, let you know what's going on as well as record. Sound detection I showed you earlier, you can enable or disable rise and decline send email and schedule when it is and isn't doing sound detection. Device, this is the, uh, this is the card, you format the card here, your SD card, tells you the situation, how much space is left. So seven hours recording left on, a f on 50 gigs. Audio, this is the audio um, on off switch, the volume levels and the different types of codec. 711A is fine, leave it on that. The log is the system log, what's happened, uh, you can really drill down what it's done, go into detail there. Cloud storage, something we're still playing with again, Dropbox. Um, I've noticed when we click this, we get an error message, so I need to speak to the manufacturer about that, but that is uh, something we'll update very soon. System, here's your date and time for the machine, you can synchronise your time with the uh, buttons here. Users, this is your password for people who can log into the camera. You are, of course, being the owner of the camera, would be admin and you can set up your different users and um, what they can and can't do, that sort of thing. 
Info, this is just information about the camera, serial number, that sort of thing, ID code. Now into advanced, we've got a firmware update option here. You can do a firmware update from a USB stick. You can load the default settings and you can have it reboot at certain times a week, once a week, for example. Now we're into the intelligent function. We've got the scheduler here, so we can, um, let's, let's enable that. So we want it to be blue and we're just gonna, oh, I thought I might be able to drag a box. So it's another one of those where you've got to go along and drag each, uh, click each box. A little bit fiddly this, to be honest, compared to the, the previous method, but uh, it's not. A, it's a couple of minutes to do that. Not at the end of the world, so I'll just do this a couple of days. So you'd set your schedule up there, and the intelligent features will be enabled on these days when the box is blue. So the type of detection available, the intelligent stuff, we have perimeter intrusion detection. Now this, when enabled, you can draw a box click, move to the next one, click. So you've got a box there and you can edit it actually just, just by clicking on the box and then drag these, drag these red corners out to where you want them. And that, get it to the perfect position. That's it, now you can choose what direction uh, the, the detection is, whether it's someone entering the box, someone ex exiting the box, or either way, here is where you choose that, A to B, B to A, or A to B, and backwards. So you can see we've got A and B there. It's got sensitivity, indoor, outdoor mode, email notification, yes or no. You've got a f up to four boxes per camera available, and you can enable record or, or not on that trigger. Next one, line crossing detection. Very similar, but it's rather than being a box, just a line. Settings the same again as before. Stationary object detection allows you to draw a box around an object. That's it. And then if that moves, you get notification. If that object moves, so, uh, I don't know, piece of jewelry valuable painting, that sort of thing, you can protect it here. Pedestrian detection, this looks for people walking and we'll um, send emails, notify you if anyone's walking down the area you've marked out. Face detection, a new feature. This will look for faces and start recording, send email, that sort of thing. Um, you can customise whereabouts is looking for faces as well. And then we've got cross counting, which is, again, you draw a line and it counts the amount of people that crosses. So you, if you had a shopping centre or a shop and you want to know what the footfall was, you could use it for that. And when you've, um, when you've got your information, you can go to the analysis side, pick the, pick the object you want to look at and it then gives you a, a list of the, the triggers, the activations, and you can even look at them as a histogram or a line chart if there is any. You can look at it daily, weekly, monthly or annually. I've got nothing recorded here unfortunately, it's a new camera, but that will give you historical information about the amount of footfall or amount of um, times it's crossed the line, that sort of thing.